the almost perfect podcast. Welcome to the Almost Perfect Podcast, a celebration of fuck-ups, failures, and falling flat on your face. This is a podcast that believes you can learn from experience, but that experience doesn't have to be your own. Ha, I'm but perfect, and I'm a functional fuck-up. Let's learn from somebody else's mistakes, and today we're going to learn from Balawansta. Balawansta is a rapper and designer. He does graphic design, and he also does web design. He can make your dope websites, or he can design you literally anything else that you need. And he can also make music videos. He's made quite a few for himself and he made a super sick one for Muzi, which you should check out after this podcast. Um, Lawrence is by far one of my favorite like artists in the country. Um, I've been a big fan of him since a few years back when I booked him for a festival called Outland. It uh, doesn't exist anymore. It was a one-hit wonder, but it was a pretty fun experience. And for a lot of the people that you know were a part of it, I think... It was a special thing. And Balawansa was one of those people. And it was because of a guy called Stambelo Dlamini. He actually sent me Balawansa and another guy, Robin Third Floor's music, who both got booked for it. Um, because I was yeah, looking for some fresh rap talent. And he sent me those through sent me those two through to me. Or something like that. You know what I mean. Uh, so he sent me the music and I dug it, man. I was like, yeah, these cats are really, really cool. And those cats are really, really cool. They've been doing some pretty big things. Their paths actually kind of, you know, going parallel to each other, which is pretty interesting. And I'll definitely get Robin Third Floor on this podcast at another time. But this one's about Pala Wanster. And yeah, ever since Outland, I've, you know, had a affinity for the guy. I've watched his career grow. I've helped him a little bit in times. You know, I've booked him here and there, given him some media coverage and that sort of thing. Because I do believe in, you know, what he does. I like the dude a lot. I think... He's a really just great dude and has a cool perspective on the world and a cool ethos. He's very DIY. He's um, That's why he's called Bala Wanster because everything he does is by himself. Although he's kind of getting over that now and we chat about that in the podcast. We chat about maybe bringing some other people in to help handle the workload because it's a lot of work these days and he's not able to really work on music as much as he'd like to which is obviously a fucking crying shame because he makes some really dope music as well as everything else he does is pretty sick uh the guy's got a good eye and ear which is a rare talent um and he has both so i definitely think he's an artist who south africans are going to get to know more and more and you know people really who do dig him rarely dig him you know like Balawansta fans are super into Balawansta and it's cool and I think it'll keep growing as time goes on but at the moment he's in a bit of a weird place and you know that leads to a cool conversation at least an interesting conversation at least an honest conversation a very honest conversation um, about so many things about a lot of insecurities man about this whole journey of being a freelancer and being a DIY musician it's not easy it's definitely not easy but it's also super rewarding and we get into all the facets of that we also get into lawenster's gig that he's doing tomorrow so if you're listening to this on the wednesday that this comes out it's on the thursday after i can't remember the dates it's in the last week of november so if you're listening to this you know when this came out you can see it on your app so figure it out from there but he's doing a gig at s43 it's called the normal agenda 3 and it's going to be pretty sick, I think. Uh, he's got his whole band playing. He's bringing down some acts from Joburg. Uh, he's got Tins clothing there. And he's also got Betty Page uh, displaying some photos there, which is pretty cool. Because Betty Page is a really good photographer. And also the person who I celebrated my four-year anniversary with yesterday. Hey! So, yeah, that's pretty cool. So that's uh, some news in my life. You're getting a little bit of it. I don't know how much of this podcast I'm ever going to do that, but I feel like that deserved a little mention. Uh, another thing that deserves a mention, you can like this podcast on Facebook at The Almost Perfect Podcast. I'm on Instagram at Almost Perfect Bob. And if you want to throw a few shekels into the pot there to help me get a sound editor and to eventually maybe get a graphic designer, or maybe hire someone like Bala Wanster, you know, to handle the design work for this podcast that would be pretty cool then please go to patreon.com forward slash almost perfect there you can subscribe for a dollar or five dollars and i'm actually going to be giving away something yes it's not just uh lies 
It's a real thing that's going to happen. I'm going to be giving away some Poison City beer. They hit me up the other day. They one of my sponsors. Um, so they dropped off a couple cases of beer with me. And I'm not going to finish it all. So I'm going to share it with the patrons of the Patreon of this podcast. So go sign up there. Um, I'll post the full details there. And yeah, you'll have to be a South African resident because I'm not going to, you know, <laughs> Aramex that overseas but yeah um we'll i'll carry it to someone in south africa it'll probably be a couple six packs or a six pack and a few four packs of their various things you might get an entire selection for christmas of poison city's delicious beer including sa's first cannabis lager no it won't get you high but it's still pretty tasty uh so yeah that's uh, the whole vibe that's the podcast thing done i guess that's everything you need to know uh, here it comes. Oh, is it? Is, it's happening. Now. It's happening. It's on. It's going. Shit. Man, I wasn't smiling before you started. I was. Man, I was sitting outside. I was so fucking frustrated, and I was hoping if I can save this for when we're on, like live, I could just you know just let it all out and make it like the uncut version, the first uncut, uh, almost perfect podcast. The first uncut, what do you mean by that? I don't know, isn't that what they usually put on like the R-rated movies? Oh, okay. Well, that's more just, um, yeah, like the ones where all the gore is still in it. It hasn't been removed. I don't think you've censored any of the podcasts. I haven't censored any of them except for when I sound like an idiot. Okay, cool. Okay, like cool. I'll, I, I tend to remove that, but also I leave some of those on. Like you gotta, you gotta also be honest with the people, but not too honest. I need to give you something to censor. Actually, not give you something. I just like, I didn't even know what I, I just. I was just frustrated. I needed to vent, but I wanted to do it with a microphone in my hand. And I mean, but you're different. you're a rapper. That's literally what you do. You yeah. vent with microphone in your hand. Funny enough, not as often as you think. Like you know, it's like. I don't know. Some, it's, I think I'm at a point where it starts to feel like, not work, but it's like, oh shit, you know, now it's something that people want and are expecting and now there's this like spotlight that's slowly dimming now in this past year, but there's still but a it, spotlight. And I know how you feel. And so is the dimming of the spotlight on purpose? No, it isn't. That's the thing. Really? It isn't. I think... Because for me, like, okay, I'll explain... I know how you feel in that I did things like with Durban is yours and stuff like that, that when it started out, it was a fun project with friends um, and then it became an expectation of a city. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. and I hated that. Like okay, that was okay. the part where I got very over things and like yeah, yeah, people yeah. expecting and wanting things. Um, and all I really wanted to do was, you know, write about my friends' bands. Sure. Like, so I get the thing where it starts becoming work, man. Like, and it's weird because I have been that person that's turned all the things that I enjoy into my work. Yeah. But eventually, but at the same time now, I'm pretty cool with it. It's yeah. just, I've learned which things I want to work on, I guess. Uh, I think for me, no, I think I don't mind, here's where I don't mind it being work when I've done the part that I love the most, which is writing, recording and etc. And then the work comes in where it's like promoting it, live performances, doing everything around it. That's when it becomes work. And that's cool. Right now, you know what would help with that? What? A label. <laughs> actually, you know, you know what? <laughs> Give me like two years ago, I would have said, fuck you. Yeah. Now I'm like, actually, you know, honestly, dude, man, that's the thing, you know, teaming up with people that can help you. Yeah. Like, you know, do the things that you don't necessarily want to do anymore. It's pretty important. My thing is now it's got, I've got like, I don't know, this is very much not, I don't think I'm articulating it well when I say this, but I might have trust, not even might have, I have trust issues when it comes to letting to, other to, people work on your project. Not even like because yeah. of what they do with it, but because of maybe their intentions, their visions, do our ideas align? You know what I mean, man? Yeah. I'm fucking running fucking four email addresses at normal because I mean, I'm four different fucking people and yeah. I CC myself as if I'm not, you know, it's because like, yeah, you gotta because present. I don't have this thing. Here's what I don't have. I don't have this thing. So for people who can't see, I'm doing the money sign. The money. I money. don't have the budget to be able to pay for people's priorities. You know, so yeah. if I'm gonna need you to constantly chase promoters for the money that they need to pay me, I can't get you to do that. Go out of your way, or I can't get you to go out of your way for anything unless I'm paying. As much as you want to help me, but like that check isn't it? Like if you know that you're getting a check from this thing, you're gonna make sure. You will not stop. Well, yeah, but the thing is, that's why you go with people who are actually already professional. You don't just go with someone who's like, 
oh, I want to do this thing, bro. Like, you know, and then you're like, cool, I'll give you 10% on my thing. And then they never actually do anything or like they do follow up. But when you go with like people who actually do the thing as their job, you know, you get a booking agent. Guess what? They earn their money because they're getting you jobs. Sure. If they're good at it. Sure. I don't know how many people are actually good at it. Yeah. <laughs> That's where it gets a bit hard. But if you're working with the right people, they make you more money. Sure. But that's in theory. <laughs> like I no, don't, I don't know, I don't know the reality when it comes to, you know, how much people actually are benefiting from the people that they work ah. with. Like it, I guess it's a case by case basis. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I definitely don't think like you know the big rappers, the big people are there on the ace. Like sure. you know they're there because of the team around them. Ah. and it, like I mean, fuck, I'm just so stuck in my comfort zone in a sense where. I mean, the people who I am kind of extend, like letting into the the circle that uh, this the full the thing that was a full stop first. Now it's a circle because yeah, yeah. letting people in. It's usually people who I know already. You know, it's like okay, cool. You know what? You know, they've earned my trust. Yeah. Person. Cool. Maybe now with what you've said, obviously a lot of these people are friends. Yeah. So it's almost but it's so it's so difficult. Working like, with your friends is both a good thing and a bad thing, though. Yeah, I feel like if somebody okay. So my thing is, I only do all these things. I only have the buy in my name because I don't want to hate my friends. Because <laughs> if I'm gonna ask you to do something and you don't do it, then it's like, but you know, and then it's like you know what, fuck you. Then I mean, I think my thing is, don't ever give me a reason. To regret asking and to w say, let me just do it myself. Because literally, that's the only reason, or maybe 90% of the buy in my name. It's like, okay, cool. First of all, I don't have money. Let me try to figure this out. Number two, first of all, I really am passionate about this thing. I see this thing working out. These guys clearly don't. Let me just do it. Uh, do you want to know why I'm doing the almost perfect podcast and not the, all the other projects that I used to do? <laughs> <laughs> but you see my point. Yeah, man. It's so frustrating, man. Like, I just sit there sometimes and I think, what am I? And what, actually, you know what? I don't mind actually doing all that shit. It's cool. I'm learning all sorts of things. Maybe I'm building an empire f in, for like 10 yeah, years. Yeah, it's useful to get those skills on your belt. I'm grateful yeah. for all the things I've done. But like, then that one thing that you're doing this for, I have I keep not recording. I keep like getting behind the mic and I just feel shit. You know, it's like all that it's like here's an example I like But to why give. not so I know you've got this other album you want to do. Yeah. Um which we'll talk about. But why not do an album about feeling shit? About yeah. feeling in the space. Like why not do an EP about this? That's what I want to do. Oh actually that's what I wanna do all the time. I wanna make music. I just wanna like get my shit out there, be as honest as I can. But now but is there a weight of expectation that you're worried about? No no, I think the thing is like the energy, it's like I have this one cabbage, right? And that cabbage is my music. And I get one liter a day, every day. And I just water this cabbage. Maybe I've been doing that for the past four years, three years. Uh, actually, four, whatever. Anyway, yeah. then next thing you know, I'm like, okay, cool. Um, I can also be my own management, quote. Yeah. There's another cabbage. Oh, also, I can do my own cover art. Another cabbage. But you've still oh, only got also, one jug of water. I've got one. So as much as I can still water that one music cabbage, I'm not giving it that whole one liter anymore. Did now I it's been distributed amongst these things. And when I get to this cabbage, I'm like, oh, I'm tired already. It's like I get home from work and I can't hug I, my kids. I think a lot of people who like are in the creative industry listening to this are going to relate to you a lot <laughs> with that. Bro, like the like, one thing. Because we all have to do that. We all have to do seven different hustles. We all have to be our own social media community managers. We all uh -huh. have to be our own booking agents and like... Until, yeah, you get to that point where someone else is like, yo, let me do that thing. Uh. But then those relationships are so, like, difficult to maintain, man. Like, some people are just, like, you know, shysters. Like, they're mm. just going to try to screw you over. Or they're just going to try and, like, siphon, like, they're vampires. And then there are people who are genuinely good at their job and who could actually elevate you. And I think you just got to look at who's done that work with other people that you respect and enjoy. Mm. But then at the same time, like... Ugh, like you still never really know man i don't know like but i do think judging from what you're saying now uh, you do need to do less <laughs> like yeah, so that you can yeah. do more in the thing you want to do and this buy is heavy by the time i'm maybe like 80 i'll be like do you think you'll drop it to go back to luanster actually you not know, just to be dramatic i might do it i yeah. mean i could totally say okay you know what i'll drop it like metaphorically and still keep the buy but just because i'll be dramatic i'll say the whole buy will go but i mean you know i'll see what happens a little full by the wayside <laughs> there we go man tell me do you think do you think um john is 
his only client is Muzi. Do you think he's like it's just them the at the moment? Them? Yeah, yeah, I think that is the situation. So obviously, he wouldn't want to take on like another child. I mean, not child, but like you know. I mean, you can hassle him for a year, like Muzi did. Oh really? Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> Go, yeah, I wrote about, I interviewed Muzi about this about four or five years ago, I think now. Yeah. Or maybe three. I don't know, a while ago. It was for Noisy. And yeah, Muzi was telling me the story of uh, how he got John to uh, yeah, manage him because John had retired from managing. Oh, uh, he was. Okay, yeah, sweet. so he used to manage like Jack's Panic and stuff like that. And okay. like, yeah. And then Muzi was like, no, this is the guy. This is the guy I went to work with. Uh-huh. And so he literally, like, I think, mailed him every single week for over a year, just like hitting him up with like, mixes and stuff i think and like just like yeah i don't know if it's exactly like every week for a year but it's was a long process and like you know just hounding him and hounding and hounding him but also i don't think that's necessarily a good thing for people to do yeah. but it worked out for them but i think the key thing what i'm taking from that is that he found somebody yeah. he saw something in john that he was like you know what i want this you know so i feel like opposed to having somebody come and scout you yeah you, know, you don't know what's going on yeah i mean a and r like you know isn't necessarily there for your benefit mm. like you know they're coming to scout you and stuff it's because they think you can make them money i mean although that's the only reason why anyone would work with you in any, like anyway so <laughs> yeah but like with the majors and stuff but i don't even know if a and r is even a thing anymore i don't even know if people do go like out and like watch shows to like sign people actually you know what not so much signing i think i was performing no, I don't know if it was your thing. It was sometime last year where the the, the cool runnings where the road was opened up. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was in the cops showed up. Oh, then that was, was my that thing. Yours? Yeah. That was, which one was it? It was one of the first clocks, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So. Um, was, what, no, that was my birthday one, I think. Yeah, it was your birthday. <laughs> oh, sure, yeah. Was like, I, not, I was performing. Yeah, that, you right? were. Yeah, yeah. It was so, you. It was like Stone Palace. It was like, yeah, a few and different Ryan Black, was there. Yeah, and I think Black Math on that ball. Yeah, it was. Okay, cool. Pretty so I think that day. Uh, no, was I with the band? Was I the band? Yeah, I think you were. Cool. So, so that day, um, there's another guy who called me out. Um, we just like spoke like, hey man, like that stuff that you're doing is great. It's another guy who I'd never seen before. He's like, hey man, so like, like who, who's your, who, 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 who are you signed to here? They're like, oh, well, independent and I've got somebody. Like, okay, cool, man. Yeah, no, that stuff you're doing. And he's telling me, okay, but change that. Maybe take that guy out. I'm thinking, oh, okay, cool. So, yeah. you, so you wrote a song about it? <laughs> no, no, actually, it's fairly recent, actually. So it was like, I mean, I pointed out that it's recent because I've been in a shithole for a while, actually, just for songs writing, but we'll talk about that. Yeah, yeah. So, like, okay, I was like, whatever, you're talking so much air, but I'm gonna let you talk. You know, it's like, no, you're absolutely right. No, you're absolutely yeah. right. The whole time, it was actually literally a reenactment of that. And that's happening. Then cool, I get back inside. Then whatever day goes, night goes, and the next day I get a voice note from Ryan. Hey man, listen, I heard overheard two guys talking about how you're gonna make them a lot of money. Just wanted to give you a heads up. I was like, oh, <laughs> I see. You know, I mean, I knew he was talking shit. It was just a guy who I'd never seen before. So when you talk about scouting and A and R, I think that's the kind of shit. Those are the people you bump into. These yeah, days. I mean, yeah, it's all. It's such a rig, man. And it's weird because I was chatting to Chucky from TRO on uh, the Life on the Winston podcast. So oh, Neil yeah. Broderman and they're like an old school rap crew from uh-huh. like the 90s, man. Like, and like AKA shouts them out and like sure. super dope. The guy was like, I'm going to, I want to manage you guys and blah, blah, blah. And the guy moved to Joburg being like, yo, I'm going to get you guys a contract and stuff. And they entered into this rap co- like contest and stuff. And they got to the finals in Joburg and guess who was in the finals? More. Their fucking manager. He was up there trying to get a contract for himself. Get the fuck out of here. This is in South Africa. Bro, this, oh wasn't, my God. this is movie shit, dude. dude. This was in the 90s and shit, oh my dude. God. Like, so there's so many stories like this, and that's why uh. I get like, your apprehension of not wanting Man, to I'm like so sign over to anyone else. Like, like I mean, it's, it's weird. The only thing that annoys me is that it's like, I don't want to say I'm coming from a place of ignorance because, I mean, I've never been signed before. I've never yeah. had a bad contract that tells me no. I mean, I know people who have... And you know, but I mean, that's no place for me to kind of take their word. The thing is, how many people do you know have good contracts? Maybe the ones who aren't saying anything have good contracts, (laughs) you know, and you know, I mean, mean, it took, it took AKA and Casper how long to sign? Yeah, man, you know what I need? The thing is, I want to be in a position where 
Actually, I probably am right now where I can... Actually, not even not so much. Maybe 40% because that's 60%. Man, I've got so much growing up to do. Not even mature-wise. But How like old are just, you now? I forget. I'm 23. But, um, yeah, dude. 23 is like when I started doing like anything with my life. <laughs> sure. That was literally when I started Urban as yours. Can, like, can you, man, I am putting... I put myself so, under so much pressure. I put myself under so much pressure that like I just have to figure shit out. Man, I look a lot older. <laughs> like you don't look a lot older. It's maybe fine, maybe maybe a year or two older than you should. Like, I mean, but I think it's because I put myself through so much frustration. You know, just like trying to figure shit out, trying to have my life together. You know, um, man, I work from home. You know, yeah. freelance. So like literally the whole day I'm sitting in. Because you do graphic. So it's weird. We haven't even introduced we shit haven't, yet. But I think and <laughs> I think we went like yeah, we're like 15 minutes in. <laughs> But I've been introduced to you beforehand anyway, so that's what I like about this. <laughs> oh, yes, I've, I've heard you do that. Yeah, so. but the cool thing is you do graphic design yeah. as well as, I mean, you do web development as well a little bit. Or web, yeah, web design. Web design. Yeah. And then you also rap. Yeah. And you produce music. Yeah. And what else? So I, I mean, it, it, you, you'd swear I have like a hundred things, but I feel like when you take graphic design and music as an umbrella, it almost like just groups everything. But I mean... I do all sorts of things. Yeah, because you can make packaging for like an, a brand, an entire brand. Like, yeah, yeah. So like, I think with music, music like uh, is just something that I picked up in two thousand and eight. You know, my brother had a um, a makeshift studio in the back room at home. Your he brother Kimo Sabe, the yeah, Kimo you know. Sabe. At some point, his name was si at the time he was six four. Six foul. Six foul from like it's it's funny. Uh, I think you need to get him on the show. in a six foul. He'll tell you about that. Actually, you know what? He's around. And he's, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll chat. Yeah, we'll chat. Yeah, so anyway, um, yeah, cool. Then, like, uh, that back room, um, it was just, he was, he was, like, we were, well, mostly him. He was, like, a, a geek, you know, terrible at sports, great at technology things, you know. He was, like, one of the cool guys, though, like, in terms of, like, hey, fuck you, you know, like. Yeah, I know my shit, dog. Like, I don't go, need to be know? able to, yeah. So, um, cool. Then there was that back room. He would just maybe experiment with Fruity Loops. Him and his friend, they used to just play with games and game development things and Fruity Loops came along. Then they tried, and he got hooked on that. Then he figured it out, tried to figure it out. And then eventually people, this is when we were still in high school, people would park at our gate. You know, maybe if we like took the uh, transport from school, uh, that would pick us up and drop everybody off and then drop us off. We'd get the people in uniform as well, kids. Yeah, at from the school. gate from their school coming to our gate. They at the because we the, we stayed like there was a passage to our gate and there was houses on the side, so they were only outside of the passage because they were shouted at for shouting at the gate. <laughs> like it's six four the whole time, the whole fucking time, you know. So then they were sitting there. So he was a little mini celeb, like in his hometown. Man, it was crazy. Like and you, you, it's, it's, that's why it's so annoying that like you know Cockstead doesn't give him that, but it's whatever. Uh, politics, stupid, <laughs> really? stupid fucking politics. So <laughs> anyway, so eventually the people would just come in and out studio recording. They we called it the Five Nine Studios, Dell Five Nine. I don't, I I don't know. I, he didn't explain it properly, but anyway. Um, so eventually I'd just be in studio with dudes, uh, listening to dudes have sessions, listening to my brother do sessions, just do, hoping that one day somebody who came to record or some crew is going to say, hey man, don't you, you want to jump you wanna, on? You know, <laughs> and I don't know why, I'd, I'd write to their beats while they were, they were working, just in my head and stuff. Then eventually I gave it a try and, you know, I was just always practicing, you know, he left and he left Cockstad for Joburg to study in 2012. So he left it with all the equipment and everything, but that didn't stop me from like just constantly writing and maybe I managed to hook up a mic and I just constantly got better and better. 2014 came, I moved to Durban. Music just like, and then you it started, took a turn yeah. actually because the stuff I was making wasn't the stuff that I started making when I came to Durban because my life changed. You know, it was a total different environment. It was so what kind, of, what kind of music were you making before? I was, okay, first of all, I was a huge Lil Wayne, T-Pain fan. Oh, wow. So before there was You AKA. would never, okay, you, would, you wouldn't really know now. Although the punchlines thing, but yours aren't that cheesy. But yeah, like, <laughs> although Man, I guess sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I guess so. I guess so. You know, so um, before AK was like, auto-tuning you know which is i feel like he, you he were you auto-tuning man i was like t painting lil waning man i was rapping about kush I'd, I'd never i didn't even know what that was i didn't i had lines about that so not necessarily rapping about it but i mean me and i think me and stc share uh because i know i've heard i've checked his interview he talks about lil wayne ti i'm thinking 
well, well, like, I think years are it's weird because I think those are the guys that yeah, Lil Wayne's probably the biggest influence yeah. on your generation. Literally, <laughs> like, man, literally, like I was like that was which you is know, probably what says why wow, your contemporaries are so fucked. <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> like you mean, look at the mumble rap shit like in America, and you just look at like guys like Takashi Six Nine, and then it's like, yep, they grew up listening to Wayne. <laughs> but like, I don't know what happened though because okay, where the Eminem for me comes in like it was a very long time ago. I was yeah, a kid. but your sounds influenced by Eminem, but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so like that was never like anything that influenced me directly when I started making because when I started making music because I thought Lil Wayne I, I really liked him I mean I, it's almost as if I was regurgitating what he was doing yeah, okay. but like it, but I mean everyone when they're young does yeah. that so, I mean I was in a band called Burning Bush and we were like oh, kind shit. of like a Rage Against the Machine meets White Straps like kind oh, of thing shit. it was okay. super shit um, <laughs> well I think if you if you were still doing that at this point I think you'd be fucking crazy man like because yeah but it wasn't really what I wanted to do okay sweet okay, like cool. that's why I got into comedy because at first I thought I wanted to be in a band but then once again fucking other people dude like hell is oh, hell is other people if we so, could clone <laughs> ourselves if we could oh, clone dude, ourselves I would, I would, that would be the worst thing ever I would fucking kill myself actually, like, actually about that, too. that would be dope because I would get to kill myself but not oh, actually die that would be actually terrifying actually <laughs> I feel like that would, would be like a catch you know how you get those <laughs> hey you have three wishes and then there's always like a twist so if you say hey I want to fly you get in a like you just appear in a plane and you're just falling from it oh yeah yeah you know so that it's like hey I wish I had a clone of myself and it turns out to be the most fucking annoying person in the world yeah because it would be you <laughs> you know so it's like fuck see if I could get a clone of myself and just make it more subordinate and just i don't know but it would, it would so just somehow. just get a robot you but then the robot you is going to take over eventually and like he's going to kill you and live your life so i don't know man that's also the problem with getting clones dude like there's all the incentive in the world to get rid of you then there's very little incentive for them to keep you around yeah man i just need to start trusting people <laughs> you know i just need to start trusting people man like with that thing that muzi was doing with 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 john what he noticed if i'm honest like i don't want this to obviously Fuck it. Man, Ryan Van Rowen. Yeah. That guy. I watched because we were doing, we were at uh, Robin Third Floor's uh, tour, Last Leg. The Kasi yeah. made me tour. Yeah, I'm Laz. We were there and Ryan was doing sound and I was just, I wanted to check it out just to come and support the guy. And uh, Baraka was there, which is cool. Like, yeah, we were there and we checked it out and um, Ryan's just up and down setting everything actually this stuff behind you yeah the speakers the work. i was like hey i remember you guys yeah we're at kai records at the moment we're actually recording in ryan's uh, yeah. office at the moment yeah. in fuego oh, heat's shit. office yeah oh yeah yeah actually. we can we, we've actually got some <laughs> private information <laughs> on his whiteboard here on that saturday <laughs> <laughs> you know so like i saw him i was like fuck this guy you know because i just want well he is doing yeah management things uh-huh uh-huh I, like yeah. i mean he if you listen to the podcast with him he did say that that's something yeah. that's roots up is looking to do yeah 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 so if but you know what the annoying thing for me i was chatting to robin third floor about it um because i took man listen ryan from fuego like he'd make a dope manager because while i honestly if i have to say it on record like what i'm what i'd look for in a manager is somebody who is going to is keen it just wants to get their hands dirty yeah you know like who's who, willing to who, work who's willing yeah not wants to who's willing to get their hands dirty who's willing to like because man I, I mean i look at ryan when he's doing that stuff that he does and i'm thinking bro can i help and like i don't know if he doesn't hear me or <laughs> but he's moving no he quick. just does yeah he he's just, just like i got it does. i got it I like he's always shit. like that you yeah. know i just need like i mean leave the whole chasing promoters for money like you know we could do that together and just kick their asses <laughs> somehow but i need somebody okay cool man this is my vision this is what i like how do we figure this okay cool well we can do this blah 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 somebody's gonna be like proactive you know yeah and not just hey let's do this but hey we're gonna do this here's how we're gonna like just so when i saw ryan just in action i've seen them so many times just setting things up at s43 just setting up i was like fuck well i think like long term hopefully he can get other people to do that kind of stuff and yeah. he can do the more managing yeah every see, pro- see that, like people thing yeah cause cause he's cause like I mean, I love that he's good at, you know, that he gets his hands dirty and mm. stuff, but he is a bit older now and he is the guy in charge and like, yeah. you can hand that off more and more. And I think he is like mm. bringing youngsters up and teaching them the skills to mm. run gigs and stuff so that he can like, yeah, fulfill, will have more of a overseeing role. And then, you know, because yeah. each of them, there's three of them at Roots Up, yeah. Carla, uh, Shaq. Shaq and him. 
each of them has obviously a, yeah. a specific role. And so then there's also like other people that Ryan works with and stuff, you know, oh, that's sweet. Okay, like cool. with gigs and stuff, you know, sound guys and like just oh, yeah, 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 guys yeah. like Tyler and that to help him out. And like, mm, mm-hmm. so I think the company itself will grow with time. Because with what you said now, but like, obviously if he can get people to do that thing and he can focus on the managing thing. Yeah. What I said to Robin is like, it was a little bit weird. I mean, this is no shade at all. I mean, shout out to Roots Up, but I told myself, hey, I just want Ryan. <laughs> but I you don't know, but like, the, the other it's, guys. It's Roots That's Up. Also no, I, I, I mean, the thing is, it's not like I don't want them, but the thing is... But you really want Ryan. I keep thinking of John and Moise. Literally, they're my case study when I think of some, because, like, they book these shows together. Yeah. They do, because I voice notes, I chat it. No, like, I, I mean, I, like, for personal stuff, I chat to Moise directly. For everything else, I chat to John. But you know what I mean? Like, like if I want to get an interview with Muzi, I chat to John. If I oh. want to do like anything, I just chat to John. Because John knows Muzi's schedule better than Muzi does now. Oh. Like, that's like... and But, like, if I want to just be like, yo, what up, dog? I'll just hit up Muzi. But, like, like... Where do you find people like that? <laughs> you see? Yeah. Somebody who... Like, come on, Bob. <laughs> like, yo, he's... I mean, I've never needed to look for people. But now that... It's like, for example, I don't always ask for help. So, when I do ask for help and I get my... It's like, what was I doing? You know, so it's like now that I'm looking for people, yeah, I but need you, to got, make you need sure to get, get used to rejection, bro. Fuck. It's gonna happen. The thing is, bro, I'm so terrified. And I'm, I'm with you. It sucks. But it hurts. Like it's going back to the Eminem thing. Literally, I will go through some of my music just bagging on myself because I learned it from one movie at the end of Eight Mile. When yeah, Eminem we, starts bagging on himself, what do you say? Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm. My legs are tiny and they're yellow, and my face is brown. What are you gonna say about me when you see me in shorts, Bob? nothing i already know i already said it you know so literally i use that almost like as a as like a coping thing but at the same time other rappers go the exact opposite route they go i'm a king i'm gonna lie and i'm gonna eat you bitch and then you just it's like for example you're opening your chest up so much and like literally starts in your heart fucked yeah but i mean at the same time they get away with it so maybe you should lie to yourself a bit more (laughs) thing is it it would i'd maybe start off lying and then it'll probably be like you know well yeah act as if and I mean, don't you want a little bit more confidence? I'd love it, man. But I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm. You don't have to be like, I'm the, you know, the king. But you can just be like, I'm pretty good at this. Yeah, actually, you know what? I've been getting more cl- closer to just like knowing what I'm great at. Yeah. You know, just like in terms of skill wise. Because um, I have those doubts as well, dude. Like a lot. Like where it's like, you know, like especially with comedy, where it's such a fucking visceral thing. Like where if you have a bad show, you know. Like, yeah. it's not like, you know, there's no hiding. There's no, like, <laughs> there's just, there's nothing about it. It's not like, oh, no, the bassist was out of time or something. It was like, no, you were fucking out of time. It's not like, you know, like, anyone else to blame. It was just like, fuck, that sucked. And maybe I'm not that good at this. But yeah. then you'll get up the next night and you'll kill and you'll go, shit, I'm fucking good at this. I fucking hate that shit. It's like, make up your fucking mind, life. But it's the, but the thing is, the thing we do is dynamic. Yeah. Like, you know, art's a dynamic thing and like, how people relate to what we're doing and how we relate to them i mean you know it's also i think like we're emotional beings and sometimes like as much as you're meant to be professional when it comes to performing and that you know your emotional states can get in the way like you can have a bad show because you fucking caught up in your head Mm. and also maybe you know (laughs) that crowd that's there like doesn't connect with your point of view maybe from completely different worldviews and you don't in that night you don't come across properly you don't you know connect mm. and then it's going to be a shit show like regardless of the art form that you're in you know like like if you play a punk band at like an old age home and like you know it's the wrong old age home you know <laughs> like they're gonna fucking really hate you <laughs> like yeah there might be some that are like yeah this is pretty dope uh. but in general like you know some nights are gonna suck because you just don't connect with the crowd and some nights it's because you're uh. like emotionally not there and some nights you just drank too much fucking red bull <laughs> like, sure. I mean, can you see what I mean when I say, like, there's a lot of growing up that I need to do, but I mean, like, experiencing all these things, because I feel like as much as, I don't know if this, if I'm getting this across, but, like, man, my comfort zone, like, I'm so within it. Like, it's so, it's such a... See, it, nice doesn't, it doesn't really sound like that, because it sounds like you're uncomfortable with the way where you're at at the moment, but maybe... Like I'm uncomfortable in that place as well. It's weird, but it's the comfort zone. It's like... I don't know, it's like a place, in fact, fuck it, you know what, it's normal. It's like, man, mm-hmm. everything that I've done, bro, it's like everything that I've done, this by normal, 
it's all been almost like an escape that I just turned into a thing that is cool for me because normal started off as just like a concept. But that's what art is. (laughs) Yeah, but I mean, the thing is like, at what point do you get out of that place that you've that safe place and into reality? I don't think you ever get into reality. Like, I mean, look at Tyler, the creator. Like, it wasn't about getting into reality. It was just about creating his own reality. And I feel like he's a good example with what you're saying, with your argument, because he doesn't feel like he needs to get out of there. He's created, everybody wants to get in. And yeah. you're paying to get in. Yeah. You know, and that's cool. I mean, I feel like I'm very much in the early stage of that because I think everybody around me, slowly but surely, people are... are, are are paying to get in you yeah know, with your buying the merch you know coming to shows like they're, they're, they 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 see something they'd like to be a part of you know something that kind of you know okay this is cool but i mean that's not everyone and i feel like because i'm still in the very early stage of my normal thing it's like fuck is this normal thing even worth being in if it always means that i must be like ostracized in my mind by everybody else who's normal with an a and i'm here because you know i mean sometimes i feel like like i i forgot how to be with people like i was shooting with Paige and leah for my merch first thing well probably third or second fourth fifth sixth thing i said to leah i told her something so fucking stupid i mean when i was in in in, in cape town in july my cousin anati uh is a student brand manager with red bull so he was driving the car picked me up at the airport with that yeah. car it was really cool and uh cool then we had a passenger on the on the other in the front so i was at the back and now the the generator kept ramming itself every time <laughs> into my ass right and i thought it was nothing started making a joke about it because that's what comedy comedians do laugh at my pain yeah i mean you know well, so like that's it, what i do that's particular. you know that's you know so <laughs> it's something you, you know so i was like joke next thing you know i come home and i have like just this is uncut but <laughs> outside of my rectum okay the rectum is is it the inside one i want the one that's like outside not the anus but that part <laughs> man i got a bruise <laughs> and i told leah about that randomly and now you're I, telling everyone okay well yeah but you know what i mean like just like it's like i can't it's like think I, of things ramming into your ass and giving not, you no. a, <laughs> giving you a bruise <laughs> you're very sensitive <laughs> but you know what i mean it's like i'm so out of it's like sometimes i feel like i'm so out of touch with people being out there and like literally you'll see me man when I'm out, I get so happy. It's like I'm a puppy. It's like, oh shit, there's so many there's people. people. There's hey, people. Everyone, yeah. like, I did first Thursday. Yeah, like, I'm the exact opposite. I go out and so I see everyone. I'm just like, oh. I feel like maybe, are you not full of them? Are you like, oh, okay, cool. I've had enough of you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm like, I just like, oh shit. So this is what it's like to be out, you know? It's just I've had all the conversations already. <laughs> shit, man. You know, like, like that's, that's the thing. Like, that's why I like doing this as well because we get to have like, a long real conversation and like about a whole range of things whereas i feel like when i go out everyone talks about the same things all the time and like it's you know and i don't know i just feel like i have to interact with people that i don't necessarily want to interact with or like not that like it just feels like a waste of time if that makes sense it's like Uh none of this interaction is enjoyable or boosting my life in any way it's just a sure. thing that i have to get through that's how i feel about going out a lot these days which is why people don't really see me out as much like uh-huh. unless it's you know things that i'm doing because also i'm tired of fucking spending money on shit like sure. i'm tired of going out and spending like four or five hundred bucks like you know because i got to get a taxi here and taxi there uh-huh. entrance money and then i got to spend the night talking to people who i don't necessarily like it's like you tagged me in and now it's my turn to try to go out because man not like i go out as often as i say but i try prioritize i mean and it has it's, nothing to do with Fuego ryan's yeah. post about that. <laughs> i mean i just go out just to kind yeah. of okay cool it is also up. it's also important when you're younger i think i mean i'm like 31 now so yeah you know i've also yeah i've just got <coughs> other shit to do like yeah. i've literally got work to do and stuff and like so my schedule is also a little bit tight and also like i've gone back to doing things that i enjoy like you know gaming and stuff like that so my life's just gotten busier in other ways. So that's why like, you won't see me at parties as much and also because it's not as beneficial to me anymore. Sure. Like, whereas for someone like you, going out is kind of important. I think when you're it's young, like work. When, when you're young creative, play. it's work and play though. Yeah. Like it, the whole socializing thing is important. Yeah. You also get to see, see, cause so the conversations that are old to me now aren't necessarily old to you, sure. you know, like the experiences aren't, you know, to me, I've done the things a thousand times. I've gone to a million gigs, I've seen, so many bands and sometimes it's great and sometimes it's not and so uh, uh. unless nowadays i know it's going to be great i don't necessarily like 
you know, get amped to go out. Sure, sure. But at the same time, like someone like you, it is important because you're going to be interacting with other people who you could be working with. Yeah, yeah, Who yeah, you could yeah. be making music with. Who, uh -huh. like, who could be buying your music. Uh -huh. Who could be buying your t-shirts. Who might oh. like you and want to come and chat to you. But yeah, and I know there's people out there who like, I'm talking now and I'm like, oh, I have to interact with the people I don't really like them. And they're probably like, I'm so sorry to go to chat to Bob. Like, <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I doubt that happens. Man, like, Honestly, um, I like I with normal being my comfort zone, right? I think how it looks like, <clears throat> not necessarily physically, but how it looks is, it's it's very lonely, oftentimes. You know, it's yeah, like man, I get that. Yeah, it's like it's like it's almost like my room, which is not too big either. You know, it's like I go in there, close the door, and I'm in normal. I'm comfortable. I think the last time I felt like that was when I was in Berlin, you know, because nobody had any expectations of me. I was in the street holding an ice cream and just skipping, and it was beautiful, you know? Yeah. So, like, that's how I feel when, like, I'm in normal sometimes, but eventually it gets, you know, lonely, and it's like, okay, you know what, maybe I should prioritize at least, like, getting out into the world, being exposed to reality uh, at least twice a month, right? So, um, every time, I think I, I tried to prioritize the past or the last two first thursdays we're in november now october i think july and august i did first thursdays at station drive and you should chat to red bull about getting on their lalela gigs on first i think thursdays. i did the first one in durban it was the first one it. It oh, those last year. last year yeah yeah, yeah. i wasn't at that so one they, yeah. they, they do them at warehouse now right? yeah yeah, yeah. So, i'm covering them so oh sweet yeah. okay cool so um every time i go out man listen this is like it's <laughs> hey man it's <laughs> people, people, people dig you yeah and they want to I mean, hang out with you and want to like talk to you people just like hey you're him you're him like the first time i did first thursday man um i had two of my friends i was like okay just maybe check out first thursday uh because it would have been a little bit weird if i went by myself and just walked around because that's what we did but there's the three of us you know okay so i get there as i rock up uh walking into station drive another girl pops up like sorry um there was this girl named lindy then I'm like, beautiful brown eyes. Then we just carried it. I was like, oh my God. I, I'd never seen this person before. And it was just cool. And then like after like I took a picture, See, we hugged. So dude, the shit you're doing is working. You know, and like, you know, and it happens so many times. Not even just Lindy. Because I'm, yeah. I'm tired of Lindy. I mean. I can imagine you wrote that song how long ago <laughs> now. You know what I mean? You how many times have you performed that song? Man, I think I left it out. Not the last set. There's a set where I decided I'm not going to do this song. <laughs> You know, I'm not going to do But then I was like, you know what? A lot of people... Who produced uh, that? I did. It's dope. Like, it's a really... Yeah, good production. Like, just the piano and stuff. It's yeah, like, I it's emotive. It's get, like, it's... Yeah. I, like... Yeah, I definitely dig the song. But I don't know how much it fits in with your current vibe. Yeah, I think my current vibe right now is... I mean, I'm in a good place. Yeah, but in terms of your live show doesn't seem like it. Your live show is a little bit angrier. You think so? Yeah, I should have stayed at home. Oh, stayed okay, at home. cool. I think, you know what it is? Now it's about energies. Yeah. It's about and vibrations. But that's the thing. But your energy is a little bit more aggressive now. Yeah, I feel like an aggressive in a more kind of like... Not in a fire, negative way. Fire, yeah, yeah, like yeah. A fiery way. Yeah. In the past, it was like negative in like an icy way. Yeah. Like the, when I wrote Lindy, where, like even if you listen to that kind of production, it's very um mellow and very like cold dark and bluesy it was just like it's very simple as well minimal just because i wanted yeah. to accommodate what i was going to say afterwards now as i'm growing this was like back in 2014 now between then and now i've been growing musically because that was i don't want to say it's the first thing i produced but funny how is the one song that i feel like it started me like i, I looked at myself like dude you're a fucking producer you know, because Brew, man, for a long time, I was like, okay, cool. I can just, I made this beat. But, I'm but you're rapper. making beats. You weren't you know, producing No, it. you know, so I don't know. Even now, I, I don't know at what point do, does a beat finish? When am I done? you right. Yeah. So I've made two beats, right? Or when someone raps over it and then the song's mixed and mastered. But now then. imagine, but when it's me, when it's me, it's so hard, bro. It's to like know so exactly hard. when you're done with and it. And also like, it's so hard to almost rap comfortably on my own beats. Not because they're different, but it's because, fuck, I'm so focused on the beat itself. If this is loud enough, that it, whereas if I'm get getting that. a beat from someone else, it's like, okay, it's done. I just focus on how I can fit in that with a beat that I made. It's like, fuck, you know, so. But do you not, when you're making the beat, hear the vocals? No. 
Okay. I don't. It's like, for example, because I was like, oh, once again, I was. Oh, well, you can. Sorry, you can tell your example, but I was just thinking about um, Muzi again because he's yeah. someone who like kind of hears the whole song. Like, really? Yeah, because he makes his own music and sings on yeah, it yeah, as yeah. well. So it's like I was thinking he's someone you could chat to, but um, maybe the way he makes music is a bit too different. Like, I mean, we both use F House too, which is cool. Which <laughs> is cool. So I said, like, okay, that's a uh, that's how we that's the icebreaker. Booty loops, you know. <laughs> so like, it's like because it's not a place where that I'm all too comfortable with production. Um, I just everything that I do on that thing on my keys on Fruity Loops on everything there on that computer is by ear so maybe I'll hum it and then I'll like yesterday yeah. yesterday I woke up and I dreamt of a melody like maybe not even dreamt of actually the last five seconds of my dream there was a melody and I woke up pulled out my laptop and I just hummed it like even when there's like I'm listening to a beat that I've worked on maybe for like a month yes I like I don't know when it's done but I just keep working on it I mean, um, there's lots of black people who do that, so don't that worry. It's, it's, like, it's, 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 it needs to eventually, I need to find a way to control no, it. I think many musicians have like drafts folders that are like, that have songs that they worked on for like, you know, a month here, a month there, and then two years later they go back to it. And like, it's part of the process, man. See, like that shit I'm learning now, man. That shit I'm learning right now, because this year I, I hadn't like released anything, so... Um, anything that would like kind of like I'd be able to grab like if an idea came that wasn't cringeworthy one that I wouldn't hate the next day I'd literally stick on it thinking okay cool this needs to be a song and slowly but surely it becomes a draft and I'm thinking fuck is that another idea that I'm scrapping you know then now I've got like ideas so this influenced like the project I'm working on so I'm working on a project what's it I, called so this project is called <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know the story already but I guess people need to hear it Spajongit. What? Spajongit. You're excused. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, so I just call it Spajongit. There's, not, there's no real explanation. There's a backstory, but I feel like there not being any explanation is the explanation, you know, okay, because, because I'm the creative guy and blah, blah. Everything needs to have a meaning to it, you know, because but people can find their own meaning, you know, like it's cool yeah find your own but, but the people would expect you know especially people who are busy fucking watching me squirm and thinking okay no he can do it he can do it. they're applauding me from the side i'm thinking bro if you like my shit so much oh, fucking help me you know but anyway <laughs> those people are probably expecting like yeah no what does that mean could it mean blah 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 but then now i just decided fuck it you know fuck it that's what spajongit means actually spajongit fuck it spajongit. you know it's like <laughs> actually that's funny how you say it because i came up with it watching legend of avatar um no 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 it was avatar the last airbender wasn't it no no the second one wait which what is it called is it, it's called avatar legend of korra then there's avatar the last airbender okay cool so the last airbender and legend of korra are the subtitles cool I think so, yeah. yeah so legend of korra i was watching with my girlfriend and then uh they're harnessing a spirit vine right then like i don't know if she asked her if it was me but it was like what is that then Spajongit, right? And then, like, she just like whispered it back to me, like, Spajongit. And I was like, What? It's like almost like. How much weed have you been smoking at this point? Actually, none. Actually, no, actually, I think I, I haven't. Yeah, no, I, I was chilling, bro. I was just watching, you know? And the thing is, here's the thing me and my sister would do that all the time make up all sorts of words. Like, just like, like, just say words. Like, just like, hey, schladdit. Or something. Uh, th yeah, like, I mean, I think we've all been through those phases. And also, guess what? I'm blowing your mind quickly. All words are made up. Th that is... I, I, where did I hear that? <laughs> no, I, I, I saw that somewhere. Yeah, I also... I just sort of heard it recently and it was in the forefront that, of my yeah, mind there. That is like, like yeah. Sh actually, dude, Shakespeare made up words all the fucking time. I mean? Like, all the old writers, like, we just... Yeah, he has a new one. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> a new one from the catalog. <laughs> actually, you know what? I think I'm three words in. I know Kanye is trying to do this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like, see, that is, is ah, fuck it, never mind. Like, I've got three so far in my book of, 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 cat, of, of. Well, you got normal. Yeah, mine. So there's normal because that's v. spelled with a V and until that red line stops going under the word normal, I will never be free. <laughs> my people won't be free. And then there's you're absolutely right, just as a, as a complete thing. Yeah. Which, both, actually, both those terms are on Urban Dictionary now. Oh, nice. Which is cool. I think the first time normal, because you submit there. You submit yeah, yeah. terms. First time I submitted normal, they were like, fuck you. You know, I they didn't say that. But because I, in the example, I put... You put yourself. Yeah, they don't want that shit. Yeah, you know? And then I was like, you know what? Fuck it. 
let me stop making normal about me. Yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. So it started there, this whole trying to like be a separate entity from normal and by Luanster and et cetera. Um, so I submitted that. They're like, okay, cool. This looks cool. Maybe we can relate. We love it so much. Thanks. You're our captain now. You're the best in the world. And then it was there. And then with you're absolutely right, I put it there. Just like, okay, cool. Maybe this is the second mixed state EP title. Let's publish it on, on Urban Diction. I mean, nobody else has done that. But I mean, <laughs> also with that, it also has a meaning to it, you know. And then now it's Pajongic. It's like all my definitions, it's like me saying fuck you to the dictionary or yeah, something. Yeah, you, you don't do the conventional it's, thing. And, and do you know what the thing is? What I like about that, it's never anything that I try to do. It's like, I think with Kanye, when you mentioned Kanye, I feel like with him, he he's at a point where he's trying bit. to, he's going to try. With me, it's like, not even comparing the two of us, but because I feel like him and I, there is something we do have in common. I think there's a USB that's tied to me and tied to the creator, by the way. Okay. Like there's a USB, like... I think it's three that USB three. Oh, you think so? so? He, I think he. I got USB three. He might have USB four. I don't know if that exists. Yeah, he's got well, some edge over me. I was gonna say, yeah, maybe you're like two and he's like three. But yeah, yeah I think it's yeah. There's that thing, you know. Like it's I, a little bit slower coming from you. Yeah, like. <laughs> South Africa, third world country. Um, but you know what I mean. Like it's like that. That's the only way I can explain the similarities we have. You know, because I've noticed like there's a video of his where he uses green screen and it's orange and his head is floating. I did my normal still video and yeah. I did not even think about it. And then like, he likes, um, who's this man? Roy Ayers has yeah. a lot of music that doesn't, I listened to Roy Ayers recently and I'm loving it. I love it so much. And like, there's just so much. Tyler's got a great ear though, dude. Like I, lo I used to listen to the mixes he used to make like a few years back. He'll do like summer mix tapes Word. and stuff. Yeah. Like an hour long mix oh, shit. and shit. Yeah, dude. Like, so yeah, now nah, he's got a great ear. Yeah. His production is fucking crazy. Dude grew up on some good music as well. Like he's just like yeah, he's influenced by a lot of good shit and like ah. so it's why like his sound is constantly evolving and constantly Yeah. I mean I definitely see the similarities between you two too. Like that's why I brought ah. it up earlier. Like yeah, I mean I'd say not necessarily like in terms of content, yes, but not in terms of style rap wise. Yeah. Like you're not like you don't rap like no. like at all but like in terms of like yeah some of the contents like the emotional side and that also you don't you don't do the thing that like it's also weird because you're influenced by eminem and tyler but yeah. you don't do like the rape bullshit like and like just the i mean tyler get it he was young and stuff eminem yeah. is just and unexcusable at this point you know like just yeah. the homophobia yeah, and all of yeah, that yeah. shit so uh -huh. but yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. I was just saying, no, like, I get what I, you're saying. Like, I get your influences from uh -huh. them, but like, it's cool. You don't have the assholeness that they had. So, I think with with the, the whole thing, bro, it's 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 strange because it's like somewhere in the world they might be in Greece. There's another Bob. You know, there's always maybe there's like there's somebody who you find who I don't know if you'll notice it directly, but they're very much like you. Because when I think of Tyler, I don't even think about like I was like our influences i mean yes those are but i think but about our think. visions yeah because what he's doing with odd future is like not necessarily as a collective but just like as a brand because like he's got a store he's all these things that whole diy approach yeah, it's like has. i was 15 years when i first drew that donut five years later for a label now we own it you know what i mean yeah it's like like it's like it's like we're in different parts of the world and i might not have heard of him and I'm doing, then it's, you know, I hear, oh shit, there's somebody doing this already. And uh, instead of me saying like, what? It's I've like, forgotten oh, what wow. the term is about that, but like that is a thing in humanity where you have like a congruent thinking essentially. Like, yeah. um, weirdly enough, I first read about this uh, with, <coughs> in terms of penis enlargements. Oh shit. Apparently like penis enlargement surgery was discovered roughly around the same time, like in two completely different continents. Oh, like it was recent, shit. like it's in the last like 20 or 30 years. Like, like it was someone in Australia and like someone somewhere else. Like I read this in an FHM when I was like 16. So sure. the, the facts are pretty different to <laughs> what I remember there. But yeah, man. So that's the thing. Like, I mean, humans in general do, you know, come up with the same solutions to problems yeah. worlds apart and yeah. stuff. And like, I think we can definitely have that in a creative sense as well. We uh -huh, can, uh -huh. And that's why we connect with each other creatively. That's why like so people's work resonates with you because they there is a some level of them that does resonate with you that uh -huh. does connect with you there's a part of them that you know they put out there that you find intriguing as you know the viewer uh -huh. so i do think in general that's kind of the whole shtick of art i think for me like i feel like when he gets an idea there's a beam of orange that's just like into the sky okay and like it's like for example it's like a, a signal 
And then when I have an idea, the same thing signal. happens. It's like the normal <laughs> signal, basically. Like the no, like it's like for example, there's another lady who I met in Cape Town, Andy Mkose. Okay. She does all sorts of things. She's uh, does she she's an artist for as well, music artist, um, art enthusiast. Um, does radio? Does uh, another series? Damn, of I should really know. Her. The I don't know, but she brands a lot of her shows around in tea and bedroom shows or house shows where she brings her things and she documents that. So uh, she was at Bush Radio. She has a show on Bush Radio. Okay. And when I was in Cape Town, I spoke to her. I had an interview with her on Saturday and just speaking to her because I know that she does a lot of things and I could relate to that. And she was also fascinated by what I had to say. And I kind of like saw like an orange aura kind of leave her levitate around her and i was like shit you know this is there's people like that you know yeah. so there's like if if somehow some normal thing had to maybe if i'm on my pc and then i do i just on my keyboard next you know the pc starts glowing orange next you know everybody gets pulled in they see boom tyler's in there and he's in there who else i like another guy called toro why yeah yeah, yeah. toro Wamoy. yeah him him, he's like, I, I watched a video of him screen printing his t shirts. He's oh, snap. Weird. Like, I've only listened to his music. I literally know nothing about him. Man, literally, I've done Because he's on a lot of cool AD tracks, I think. He is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, like, I, I, I consumed what he does from the other side where I just found that he does this as well. And then I checked the music out. So, bro, like, he does his own screen printing. He draws these things. And I was like, fuck. But so that makes you, obviously, like, as much as these things, you know, you feel like it's a struggle and it's difficult to listen to that. Don't you feel relatable then? Like, hey, like, I'm not alone. Like, as much as you're doing these things alone, there's other people doing the things alone as well. So, like, you've got a weird community of people doing things that alone. Does to me, it makes me wish we could somehow meet in one place, pick each other's brains, and everybody fucks off. You Send know? an email, bro. <laughs> actually, you know what? So, with my normal agenda, right? So, normal became yeah. from mixtape. So, this is actually yeah, what we were kind of meant to chat about today because you've got a gig happening this yeah, Thursday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it was a weird thing because this podcast, because I was looking at like, also the weird thing is you were the second first podcast of this. Sure. So, the first time I tried to do this was with Neil Green yeah. last year, like December. Oh, jo shit. Josh like recorded it and stuff. Okay. And it just sounded shit and it just wasn't a good interview. Yeah. Like, I might release it one day. And then the second one was like with you yeah and the problem was that like i didn't know that you needed like different stuff other than just two microphones with oh, a usb shit. to plug into the computer so i thought it was like recording it only recorded the one channel like so oh, it, and it sounded fuck. just terrible and it was just a crap crap vibe so you were like with the like once i got these mics like you were the first person that i was like cool let's do this podcast with and then that fucked out and then eventually i had to save and then i got this little recorder now and here we are and yeah part two part two so this is yeah the weird thing and then but i was just looking at my list because i've got a list of people i want to interview sure. and i was like well you've got a thing happening next week yeah 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 i want to chat to you anyway let's just talk about it here and instead we spoke about everything else for 50 minutes so oh 50 <laughs> yeah okay, man. in fact we can do that okay cool you're so, a talkative chap <laughs> actually you know what i should have warned you Disclaim. Actually, I should start giving people. Actually, I do. Actually, I give people disclaimers. I know you're a talkative guy. So I don't mind. I should. Actually, and there's actually another interview we did. That's why you're a good guy to interview. Yeah, actually, I always felt like you know maybe that is wh why people should interview me. You know, I feel like fuck. I can give the best interviews. You know, if I can just keep on track. Yeah, I think we've done this a lot. We jumped around. Yeah, but that's how this podcast goes. That's cool. You know, because I mean, what I was worried about when it came to the first one. I knew, I know maybe there was a system error. I thought maybe, fuck, maybe it wasn't your vision. Oh, no, 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 no. So, so I felt like, okay, I, almost, I wanted to stop you somewhere while you're talking to you. Are we doing it right this time or something? But then it's like, whatever. There's no way to, there's no right way to do it sure. like with this. I mean, because also for me, the thing is to let the guests, like I've got ideas. I mean, there's stuff I want to talk about. There's stuff I know about you and that. But at the same time, this is just an organic conversation, yeah, man. Yeah. Like it's just, you know, it depends on my relationship with people, obviously, uh -huh. as well as to how it goes. Because obviously, there's certain people I know everything about already. Yeah. There's other people who I know nothing about. And so, the hard part, I guess, is for me is making sure that the people listening get all the information. And I don't think they would have got all the information out of this sure. just yet. But at the same time, they'll have a pretty good idea of who you yeah, are, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. So... Let's continue, I guess. Oh, so, normal started off as a concept just to make myself feel good about myself because I was apparently weird in high school. 
and I didn't understand. And then I came to college and I was introspection, introspecting a lot, looking at myself like, hey, this because all I had was me at the time, like in 2014. I mean, I lived with nine other guys, but I was, you know, I didn't know. It was weird. I'm You're learning the crowd, yeah. You know, I, it was, I'm usually great with people, you know, f- making friends. I was super popular in junior school, man. But it, you had just moved to a whole yeah. new city, like you were in different circumstances. Yeah. Like, so like I just had me and then I just I learned a lot about myself, like everything I had internalized as a kid, which I just throw it up. And then normal hit me. We were told, like, like this is the concept of it. I was like, fuck, you know what? I wasn't weird in high school. Like, what are they doing? I was normal, it was, I was normal as fuck, you know? So I was like, you know what? When I Google the definition of normal in the dictionary, it says, what did I say? Google definition in the dictionary? Yeah. Anyway, well, you can actually yeah, Google you can the dictionary. Now, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it says something about uh, normal being a standard that everybody in society basically follows. And I was yeah. like, that's fucking, yeah. That's weak. It's, it, it's weak. <laughs> you know, so I was like, you know what? Fuck you, definition. Also, you, definition of the word weird. Because it's like, that shit is so relative. You know, it's like, exactly. you might like to maybe do what Lauren, I mean, what Jill Scott does with her microphone. <laughs> I want to look at you and like, what the fuck are you doing? But then you do that all the time, you know? I mean, I, I don't. I don't, <laughs> I, I, I don't fillet my marks. I mean, it's probably good practice, though. I guess so, you know? So, like, things like those. It was like, but then you do it and it's normal to you. So, just maybe, you know what? Fuck that. I'm going to own normal. But that's also a part of growing up, I guess, is, I mean, I, I mean, I didn't create a whole brand about it, but one of the reasons why I like your stuff is because, like, I kind of wish, like, I was younger than you. Like, wow. you know, because if I had listened to you growing up, like, you know, I would have felt less out of place. Yeah, you know, yeah. like, so that's why I like, appreciate this stuff. Now, even though I'm older, you now, and like, I can look back and go, yeah, man, I know how you feel. Yeah, like, yeah, I get yeah. that because I was also like, you know, an outcast in school. Fact. Uh. I mean, I'm still a weird dude, like, but I've just learned to accept it. I've learned to like go with it. And like, be unapologetic about it. Yeah. Like, I like the things I like, but that took time as well, man. Sure. Like, I mean, that took like my 20s. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so like literally that was me. When I came here, it was like me getting into that process of, okay, cool. This is me. I like what I like. Because that's literally like just what you just said. You liked what you like. That's in my bio on the Instagram normal page. On my personal Twitter page, I like what I like. Because that's the crux of, of normal. It's about you like what you like. Like if people don't like it, when whatever. Because at my show that's happening soon, I'm giving people oranges. Because <laughs> I feel like that's cool. You know, I don't know if Sean at S43 will. I don't know. It's not gonna, people are going to eat oranges and not go to the bar, right? They're not, not going to not go to bar, but they might leave like peels lying around and stuff oh, like yeah. that. I'll, okay, if that's I'll, I'll, I didn't think of that. I'll sort that out. So also, anyway. sticky fingers. So you might need you might okay, need. Okay, I'll balls. tell them not to eat it there and take it home as a souvenir. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so from the concept, it be, so I took normal. I was like, okay, I'm gonna flip this V A around, make it an upside down A for the reason, main reason. Groundbreaker. Was, <laughs> actually, at the time, I was like, fuck, you know, because that was everybody was like, yeah. a, either an X. Or a V. So yeah. I did that because I had, I really thought I had like options. I actually asked people on Facebook because I wanted, when somebody searches for normal, they only find my shit. Not the dictionary, not A, whatever. So yeah. like, okay, cool. How could I make this groundbreaking? You know, like, uh, I'll just, you know, make it a V, you know, <laughs> made it a V. And then like, you know, yeah, it became what it is. And it became um, my identity as a designer. I mean, it does work with that word though. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like just aesthetically, it looks good. You know? So, like, I think, e- like, even now, like, I-, I don't know if people who put that X, obviously, it's still pronounced. However, yeah. The name. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, now my SEO game is crazy because of that normal. It made it a lot easier because the hashtag normal, just putting normal. So, it became my brand as a designer because I didn't want to just sign by or Luan Dealer or yeah, yeah. Luanster on my stuff because I don't know why I didn't feel comfortable with that. Like even like having my face or me looking cool on a person on a t-shirt and selling it to somebody. I know how you feel. You know, <laughs> so um, as much as I do have well, like, this yeah. thing, but well, I, mean, like, I don't know if I ever want to, well, maybe a cartoon version of myself on a shirt. You that's see, that's, see that would him. be cool. You know, it's like, who's that guy? There's another comedian. Um, he did the Eminem thing. He, he ripped off Eminem cypher. Uh, I'm not uh, too sure. Fuck. He's got long hair as well. Uh, Chris, de, de. Chris Delia. Oh yeah, I, I enjoy him. Like <laughs> I do. He's not like the best comedian in the world, but he's fucking funny. He's like, hilarious. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Although I know a lot of people don't like him. Like every time I bring up like Chris Delia, because I enjoy his one man show. Sure. And people are just like, can't fucking stand him. And I'm just like, cool. Then you know, I know not to trust your taste anymore. <laughs> so, <laughs> sure. Nah. I mean, he had like some. I think he has a cartoon version of himself on yeah. t-shirts. I know, like cool. Mark Maron's also got because of his podcast and sure. that. Like he's got t-shirts. I know quite a few people have been doing that. Like. 
Yeah, but it's also... But, but I think when you're an artist, when you're like a musician... Though. Having the confidence to like do that is so wild. Like, yeah. just put, like the, I get why you do that. Because I mean, just even with me, like I'm only now like creating my own brand for myself. Like yeah. almost perfect like my normal, essentially. Sure. Oh, like, sweet. Yeah, actually, I did pick that up. Like, you know, whereas before everything I've done is just like through other things that I've created. Yeah. Like, and so because it was always like a thing of like... I don't want to, you know, make this all about me. When meanwhile, like yeah. a part of me does. <laughs> like so, now I'm just admitting that. Although this, it's it's never just about me. It's about me and other people. But are we still good for time? Yeah, we're good enough for time. We got about seven minutes actually. Okay, sweet. Perfect. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm rambling here. So okay, cool. I'm gonna cut that out, and you're just gonna tell me about normal. Okay, cool. So uh, what happens is, uh, so okay, cool. From concept to being my brand identity uh, as a designer, and then now it became kind of like. Um, what do you call this thing? Uh, a kind of hub that houses all, all my creative stuff. ideas, yeah. you know? So it's your odd future. Basically, but it's just me and it's so annoying, you know? <laughs> but anyway, so it's like whenever any idea that I have as Bailonster, because I mean, essentially, normal is the umbrella and Bailonster is a product yeah. of normal, you know? And then uh, you get the merch, the normal merch that is next to Bailonster as a product of normal, as much as it's influenced and inspired by Bailonster himself. None of this, if you didn't know who I am, if you haven't seen me smile, you wouldn't know. Yeah, no you know, idea. Yeah. This is like a stupid smile, by the way. It's just a dope, it's a dope <laughs> shirt, though, either way, which yeah. is cool. Yeah, we'll see, so the, the, with, with normal, it took me a while, all the way to, kept like trying to like get me to do this, all the way to as a friend and my project manager. Yeah. He kept trying to get me to kind of, not necessarily separate myself from normal, but to allow it to have its own life. Whereas if I'm gonna fuck up as Luandi Lenkanyuza, that ship is still f like floating yeah. and everything. So, but I mean, how I took that is okay, cool. This will allow me to do all these things as well. Yeah, compartmentalize. You know what I mean? So, if normal is the hub, I can do all sorts of things under normal. So, there's Bailonster, there's um, the merch, there's me designing for other people, me doing Robin's cover art, doing Muzi's video, doing all sorts of things. That is all under normal. Yeah, and that video got on, uh, okay, Africa Mixed and mag. everything. Oh, and yeah, Mixed mag yeah. And everything, so. so. So those things, normal being the umbrella, allows me to do those things without taking away from Pylons to being the rapper because that's yeah. a product of its own. So one of these products under normal is normal agenda. And this is the third one you're going to be this doing. This is now. the You've third one. The third one we're doing on Thursday. We did the, the first one I did at South Store, which is back in April. Yeah, which is in Glenwood. It's a dope record yeah. store. People check it. I'm going to chat to Linda on the oh, podcast. Oh, sweet. That would be dope. Eventually. Yeah, yeah cool. So we did that. Um, it was like the, the point of that was just to kind of, because there's only so much you can do at a booking. That's how I felt. Yeah. Um, which is me kind of limiting myself as well because I mean I could totally do these things in a booking as well. But anyway, uh, get no, it. No, but it, no, it's different though. It is, it is like different, when definitely. you when you're on a lineup of a show that's just like act, act, act. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to differentiate and slow things down and sure, go. Sure, sure. Yeah, I'm doing this thing now. Whereas if you just do the nights of like, yeah, I'm doing this thing yeah, now. Yeah. It's better. So that was the point of normal. It was more for me. It was still me within normal, having separate, having separated the two yet by once and normal, and then. Um, did the second one that was see at South it was just me and there's uh jazz tech opening and closing and then uh, Cape Town you expanded a little bit you yeah, bought more so acts I on. the band I had the band and I had a few acts who were based in Cape Town as well uh did that that was cool third one it's uh, coming up this Thursday yeah, coming up this Thursday unless you're listening to this after this Thursday then Hopefully it happened last Thursday <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so uh this one is kind of like I'm taking a different approach I've got a bit of a lineup um, yeah, you're bringing, you bring bringing, some I'm bringing a guy named, f f same, named TSA from Joburg and his brother. They're part of a collective called Nobody Else, with his, which is two of them, Bambata Jones and TSA. And nobody else. And Yeah, nobody <laughs> else. Actually, you know what? That's uh, Actually, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. I just cracked the Da Vinci code. You know, so uh, I'm bringing, they brought me up earlier this year. I needed to do a show at Kitchener's. Um, and they helped me get in because they get like a, every last Wednesday, I think, of, oh, cool. of a month. And they said, okay, come do your show there, you, but we'll do it collaboratively. So it's so like we'll a little networking you. thing yeah. as well. Yeah. So I was like, okay, in me returning the favor, it started off, okay, let me return the favor before the year ends. And it became something bigger than that because I want to make normal, like something, you know, something special for artists, first of all, and just for people as well. Just, it's actually me trying to invite people into normal yeah. because it's lonely. You know, so instead Would of you've been doing saying this whole time, I know, think that's what this whole podcast is about. Is about is you reaching out for some help, company? Help, help. You know, so that kind of thing. You know, so it's like okay, cool, and it's also kind of going to create a network between these artists that I like and Durban, yeah. and my people who support my music. Like, so it's like okay, cool. You want to? You think your music aligns with kind of or whatever? 
come through and that's what's you know? important like because yeah. it's it's a you're putting them on and you know like at the same time they're like can return that favor next yeah. time we go back to Joburg and these kind of networking things I mean this is how the hardcore scene was literally built and so like oh, and the hardcore scene was big back in the day like we had like you know you used to have like 200 300 people going to shows where white people were just screaming about how much they love God <laughs> like <laughs> it was weird <laughs> like but yeah man like the Joburg and Durban like touring scene was great like you know oh. like always would crash at each other's houses i mean i ho ho hosted so many bands over the years and stuff and like that's kind of missing these days and it would be cool like if you're doing that for rap you know yeah, like yeah, yeah. and always just crashing each other's couches you know traveling between joburg and durban and just strengthening the scene and just creating more of a network man i realize every time i've spoken to you about something along these lines you've always made reference to punk well, like, oh. I mean, that's where I come from. So. But I mean, like, you're seeing something. Are you seeing something? Or is well, yes, like punk's, punk's DIY is fuck. That's the whole thing. Perfect. Like, you know? that is the whole thing. Punk was all about doing it yourself, creating your own shows, Sweet. finding your own venues, fucking doing whatever it took to put on shows. And, like, mm. you know, we didn't really have issues with cops and stuff, but, like, back in the day, that used to be the thing. Shit would get shut down. And, like, mm. it's just, yeah, like, the punk philosophy for me is just that ethos of do it yourself sure like and going against the grain and not necessarily doing what everyone else is doing so so that, i'd be like a, a, you a, could be a bit of a punk but rap music and punk go hand in hand they sweet. were they developed kind of congruently although punk came beforehand but in the yeah. 80s in new york and stuff like uh, we could get into that forever but i actually think we're pretty much done yet i think yeah, what do yeah, you think yeah, yeah, yeah. so what can people expect this weekend uh this weekend okay what's happening this weekend like this i mean not weekend? this weekend okay, this, at, the well, at the show sorry this thursday so this is coming out on wednesday yeah okay sweet cool so at the show itself it's just like um first of all you're being like you're like formally being introduced to normal it's a free gig yeah. it's a free gig it's a free gig at s43 um on umgeni um it's gonna be a really great show o outside of just the music i've got stalls i've got Paige who's got yeah. her prints up i know her tins oh you like i should i should introduce you guys yeah. um so there's like tins. <laughs> uh there's tins who's gonna who nipo who's gonna have a stall and then it's gonna be a merch table with my stuff so i'm just trying to create like an experience more than just like anything else and once again you know that's like what the hardcore scene used to do they used to sell merch at the back of shows <laughs> that's actually you know what that's what i'm saying literally you told i remember we spoke about this yeah. i was like fuck you know why the fuck not yeah like I've got fucking merchandise Let's exactly go. so do it dude. Yeah, like because yeah, yeah, yeah. you're more likely especially if, like you know the people that don't drink yeah. like they're more likely to pick up your merch at yeah, a gig, yeah. especially if they dig you if you've oh, got like wow. stickers and stuff like Oof, especially man fuck it's gonna be crazy everything that i keep everything that i'd want to give everybody if i could they'll get it there perfect yeah i'm gonna be at my staff party and then i'm gonna come on through to you Woo! so yeah i might be a little uh lit as they Sweet. say perfect <laughs> cool see you thursday bro <laughs> are we, are we?